Welcome again to this lecture on event-based robot vision. And in this video, we are going to take a look at uh, some literature review of image intensity reconstruction methods. So um, this is probably the first one that it's from 2011, as we mentioned. You can see the reference on the bottom by Kukutal, so the people from uh, from Zurich, from the Institute of Neuroinformatics, three years after the DVS was commercially available. And this is called the interactive maps or interactive visual maps. And basically it's a method for simultaneous estimation of multiple quantities, not just image intensity, um, in case that you have a rotating event camera. And this is a map of the different quantities uh, being estimated or known. And it's not meant to be like a feed forward network, but to be like a, uh, a network that is kind of reverberating and converging into uh, uh, stable uh, state. So the circles or the ellipsoids are the quantities, and we have such as uh, events, so intensity derivative, intensity on the top left, the spatial gradient, so brightness gradient, G on the bottom left, the optical flow, the camera rotation. Um, and um, the rectangles are the equations relating them. So, for example, we know that the gradient is the, the spatial derivative of the intensity or the brightness. And we know there is a relationship between the, the events, uh, the gradient, and the optical flow. And this is basically another way to write the linearized event generation model, saying um, also is kind of the... Um, optical flow constraint or the brightness constancy equation saying that the, the temporal derivative is equal to the spatial derivative dot product with the optical flow. Uh, yeah, and there is also a relationship between the optical flow that you see in the image and the motion of the camera, right? They are not independent, they, they are equations relating them. So the idea is that the, these maps are kind of uh, a representation or retinotopic representation of what happens in the in the cortex, right? They are, it's it's by inspired in the in the cortex, and the idea is that now we will have some input events to one of the nodes, and this information will propagate through this network, um, and basically from this we will obtain um, different things. Uh, we here probably are interested in the image intensity that it's on the top left. So how to go from the events into the image intensity, but there are other quantities. If you're interested in optical flow uh, due to a rotating camera, then your output would be now the flow rather than the, than the intensity. Um, yeah, so this is basically the idea that uh, there is uh, an input signal and this is propagating through the network. And how do they talk to each other? Well, they talk in terms of trying to satisfy the equation and these are basically message messages that are passing from one visual quantity to another through these equations and they are updates local update rules that basically says how each pixel should update its state in this case intensity or how should every pixel update the gradient or the optical flow to be consistent with the information coming from the events or the information coming from from the other nodes yeah, so these are local update rules if they are these visual quantities and if it's something that it's global like the angular velocity uh, then this is a global update rule so it's kind of distributed processing and let's take a look at the at the video so on the here on the bottom right you see this is the input events and from these input events we are able to estimate the other quantities and we are in mostly interested in image intensity. So it's a joint estimation uh, method that estimates <clears throat> all these things, right? Not only image intensity, but optical flow, which is not shown in the video, and then image gradient. So this is the, <clears throat> the magnitude on the, of the gradient is on the top right and the direction it's on the bottom left and you combine these two, then you have the gradient and then you integrate it and you will get absolute intensity. 
Okay, so that's for uh, the 2011. Then we have, we'll move to 2014, and we have this work called Simultaneous Mosaicing and Tracking with an Event Camera. Basically, what they do is that they are doing parallel tracking and mapping. Uh, tracking means uh, tracking the motion of the, the ego motion of the camera, and mapping means trying to reconstruct the environment. In this case, because we have a, a rotating event camera, there is no translation or depth. You cannot estimate 3D depth. What you can estimate is kind of a mosaic, uh, a map of intensities of the scene. So that's what it is. The mosaic in its panoramic imaging. And how they do it? Well, <clears throat> what they do is they, we will see this in later um, slides. And what they do is that they, First, try to estimate the gradient intensity at every pixel in this mosaic using a, something called an extended Kalman filter. And basically, this is a, the, the measurement model that says uh, how likely, or the sensor model, how likely it is that an event was uh, generated given that the current motion, the current rotation is R, and this is using uh, equations from the linearized event generation model that you see. So G is the gradient, uh, V is the velocity, so what we also call optical flow. And C is this constant uh, threshold, so the contrast sensitivity. And you know, if, well, if you work out with the event generation model, then you know that this should be the inverse of the time between the events. So this is called the, the pixel event rate. And this measurement equation uh, can be used uh, within this extended Kalman filter to continuously update the state of the filter that will estimate G, so the variable here in the numerator. And then once you have estimated G, you can do Poisson reconstruction to obtain uh, absolute intensity. That's for the mapping part. And the tracking, basically, it's ego motion estimation. The, the also use uh, um, Bayesian filter, in this case a particle filter, um, and then they update the particle weights using the intensity from the maps. So this is, they basically get the events, they refer the events to the map, read out the two intensities, subtract them, uh, and then compare it with a probabilistic model of the event generation. So what we see on the left is the intensity gradient map resulting from the mosaic, and on the right is the one that it's Poisson integrated. And for this to come out properly and not have double edges, basically the tracking also needs to work to work well. Let's look with the video um, how it works. So on the top left, you have the input events. On the, on the top, you have a, an estimation of the gradient map with colors representing direction, uh, and the amount of color representing the magnitude. And on the bottom, you see the reconstructed mosaic. Right? So this is kind of also magic how, as the camera is rotating, it's uh, referring the events to this map um, and then being able to reconstruct a panorama of the scene. And what you see the rectangle uh, in the video is basically the field of view of the camera. So the current position of the camera with respect to this uh, 360 degrees uh, mosaic. So how does this uh, integration or image reconstruction work? Well, the idea is the following. Um, Imagine we have an image, we don't know what it is, but we could sense the gradient. We know it's gradient in the x direction and the gradient in the y direction. So with this, we can compute a scalar field called the divergence, which is the, so the derivative along x of the x component plus the derivative along y of the y component. And this is represented here by this, this scalar field. And then, then use um, something called the Poisson equation. So if we plug this as driving term of the Poisson equation and we solve it, um, um, so this is a second order partial differential equation where delta here doesn't mean increment, it means the, the Laplacian. 
this is the, la the second derivative operator equals to the divergence. We will get, if we solve this equation, then we will get a reconstructed image. And then when we compare it to the original one, well, there is some blur part, but for most part, it's, it's quite uh, a good reconstruction of the, of the original image. That's the basic idea. That's why we see previously in the video uh, on the top, um, this is the, the gradient. So the combination of the gradient in X and Y direction is this uh, colored gradient map. And on the bottom, you see the, the result of doing the Poisson integration, which is kind of like a 2D integration. Instead of integrating along one dimension, you integrate along two dimensions. Okay, so also in 2014, there was uh, at the CVPR workshop, there was this uh, device that is called Tuco 3D uh, by the Austria, Austrian Institute of Technology. And basically it has two rotating 1D cameras, uh, event cameras, right? And they are, you can see here represented by this uh, line, they are rotating at around 10 Hertz, so 10 times per second and they are collecting events. And uh, basically because it's a constrained uh, setup, you know that when you do a full rotation, you should come up to, to the same location. Um, the events, uh, you could integrate along each line independently, but when you uh, go one full turn and come back, then the, the intensity at that point uh, should should agree, right? If you go here, you start somewhere here left, you start counting or integrating events, and then you come back from the, from the right, um, then you should arrive at an intensity that it's uh, the same as when you started. And that's one condition, so periodicity, that helps to obtain these um, brightness, brightness maps. And because there are two sensors and there is some baseline between them, they can also provide uh, depth information, so 3D information. 